Welcome to Understanding Ruby Closures. You may have heard about closures before, but perhaps the definition was presented in a jargony, computer science-y kind of way that was hard to understand. In this video, I'm going to try to give a more or less jargon-free definition of closures in a way that you can actually understand. First, let's address why you would want to care about closures. Closures are foundational to procs and blocks, and procs and blocks are foundational to the Ruby language. So if you really want to understand the language that you're working with, closures are a super important concept to understand because, no it or not, you work with closures all the time. Here's a definition of closures that I came up with myself. Even though we're talking about Ruby, this definition is language agnostic. I think it's useful to get a solid grounding in closures as a general programming concept and then consider how closures are used in Ruby. Here's the definition. A closure is a record which stores a function plus potentially some variables. Let's take this definition one piece at a time so we can really understand it. First of all, a closure is a record. What exactly do we mean by that? Well, here's an illustration. Here I have a closure. And in case you didn't know, every proc is a closure. I'm taking this proc object and assigning it to a variable. That's what I mean when I say a closure is a record. In this case, the record is a variable. I don't mean record in a special sense, like a database record or anything like that. I just mean a record in the sense of something that's stored. When I write down somebody's name on a piece of paper, for example, that's a record. I'm using the term record right now in the most general sense possible. So again, I'm taking this proc object, which is a closure, and I'm assigning it to a record, which is a variable. Now, why do I say record instead of just saying variable? That's because a variable is not the only possible kind of record. Another kind of record, for example, is the key of a hash. In this case, I have a proc, which again is a closure, and I'm assigning it to this value in this hash. As you can see on line five of this file, I can call this closure or proc the same way that I would call a closure or proc that's assigned to a variable. It just so happens that in this case, the closure is not assigned to a variable, it's assigned to a hash key. So that's the a closure is a record part of the definition. Now let's move on to the which stores a function part. The part of this proc object that lies between the braces, that's the function that we're talking about in this case. Technically, in this particular case, since we're using Ruby and since we're using procs, the part that lies inside the braces is a block. But I'm trying to be intentionally broad and give a definition of closures that applies to any language, not just Ruby. So I ask you to take my meaning a little bit loosely when I say that a closure stores a function. That's not precisely true in this case, but it's true enough to be a useful and reasonably accurate definition. So that's the which stores a function part of the closure definition. Now let's talk about the plus potentially some variables part of the definition. Here's a proc object that's a bit more complicated than the proc objects from the previous two examples. Let's take it line by line. First, I'm assigning this variable called number of exclamation points. Obviously, that won't mean much to you until you see what we do with that variable. But on line three, we're assigning a proc to this variable called amplifier. So think back to the first two parts of the definition. A closure is a record, so amplifier is that record. And then the second part was that stores a function. So lines four and five represent that function that we're storing in this record that here we're calling amplifier. Here on line four, we're saying increment number of exclamation points by one. And then we return this value of louder plus an exclamation point times however many exclamation points we currently have. Now, in order to do something interesting with this program, let's add a few lines of usage. Now here we're calling amplifier four times, and then we're outputting number of exclamation points. Let's see what output this gives us. 
as you can see, the value of number of exclamation points is remembered and it gets incremented each time so that we see one more exclamation point each time we call that amplifier closure. Let's review our closure definition. A closure is a record which stores a function plus potentially some variables. What I mean by a closure is a record is just that the closure is stored in something, whether that be a variable or a hash key or anything else. When I say which stores a function, I just mean that the value of the closure is a function that we can call. Lastly, if we use any external variables in our closure, those variables get included in the environment of our closure. Thanks for watching this video. To find my blog posts, products, podcasts, and other videos, visit codewithjason.com.